Hey guys, thought I'd uh, shoot this little video here showing off my uh, Smith & Wesson 629-1 44 Magnum. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's a 629-1 model number. Nice big cylinder there. So uh, I decided to put together this video because, um, well, I guess I can say um, I sold the gun, um, and this was my my first handgun. So I've gotten pretty attached to it. I got it back uh, last May, so I've had it for a little while. I've only ever shot it like half a dozen times, and the reason I'm selling it is because I just can't uh, afford the 44 Magnum rounds or the 44 Special. It's just, uh, and in my present situation, I just, I cannot reload. So, I just thought that, um, and again, I'm actually replacing it. I'm replacing it with this thing, a, uh, 6.8, 686 Mountain Gun. These are, uh, kind of rare if you haven't heard of it. Um, but, uh, I just, I don't like it as much as this. This is just an awesome gun. It's, it's loosened up a little bit. This is, I think these came in around 86, and they didn't make the Dash 1s for too long, I think. They moved into the Dash 2 pretty fast. Um, this is, I think internally it's stock. Um, the wood grips um, were replaced by with Patchmeyer grips by the previous owner, and um, I happened to replace them with these um, uh, mono grips, I think they're called, with the open back strap, so I can get my hand around it. See, so I got a proper grip there. I got average size hands, so the open back works nice. It's about to pull the trigger. No nice, awesome trigger. Just love the thing. I, as far as I know, it's stock. It's like a 12-pound trigger. It's got to be. I don't think anything was done to it. And when I got it, uh, I got it off Gun Broker, and there was a little bit of rust here and there. I don't know if you can probably see that in shot. And uh, like I said, it's it's loosened up. It's a tad of end shake there, but that's if you know anything about these guns, that's kind of how they tend to be. They loosen up every thousand shots or so. I only ever put uh, 180 grain 44 Magnum rounds. I put specials in the first time I shot it just to get a feel for it before I experienced the um, intense recoil. So, I mean. 44 Magnum, I mean, there's bigger stuff out there, but, I mean, it'll take down anything living you want to take down. It's nothing to, it's nothing to mess around with. Um, against people, you got 44 Special. That's that's nothing you want to mess with either. Um, I have my, my preferences. I'm, right now, I carry an automatic. It's a 40, uh, 40 caliber Smith & Wesson. So I, I, I very much like Smith & Wessons. Um, I love I love the old Smith and Wessons. I guess we can since I have it with me. I can compare it to the the newer ones. I guess for me, what stands out is the uh, the cylinder release. This is the new design, which is supposed to be easier on the thumb. It's supposed to be easier to get to. I don't think it's that way at all. I much prefer the feel of the uh, old cylinder release. I think it's it just it fits my thumb so nicely. You can see it's like a bevel there. It's just so nice, but I mean, you can replace the newer ones for like 30 bucks. You can get the old school one. And one of the things that I don't know if you can see that little hole there. I guess it'd be like a pin. I'm not sure what holes the firing pin. The in this gun, the firing pin's mounted in the frame. You see that? It's like flat at the hammer. And um, you can see the firing pin there. And uh, with the old ones, and you've probably seen this in action movies and whatnot, firing pin is right there. I mean, that just that looks so badass. I love having the gun cocked like that. I usually shoot double action. Well, uh, you can see as I'm loaded. I'm a double action kind of guy, and this is a silky smooth trigger. Oh, bump my stand here. Silky smooth trigger. On this new one here, this is extremely dirty. A little bit of grit. Um, it feels lighter. I don't know if this is my imagination, it just feels lighter, not as smooth, like it, it feels lighter in the middle, which is weird, 
those guns either loosen up at the end or they start stacking. I, I, I like the end frame. It fits my hand nice. Even with the 180 grain round, it doesn't bug my hand too much. After a little while, I'm going to feel it. And I could probably get some gloves on and still get a proper trigger reach on it. So, you know, just, just wear shooting gloves and not worry about it. With my uh, my carry piece, my current carry piece, the Caltech P40, just I feel it way more. As I, I love shooting the gun, it's just it kind of hurts a little bit. But I have not shot this thing yet. Very nice. I'm gonna get that out of the way. I guess um, I guess some other differences. A lot of the the newer guns, you'll see them. They have the uh, the full underlug. This is a limited edition, the mountain gun. It's had, not only is it a uh, partial underlock, it's a tapered barrel. I don't know if you can see that there. It just, it kind of comes in a little bit as it goes towards the muzzle. Kind of a little odd looking. This is a, uh, it's a pretty beefy barrel on this thing. I mean, it, well, it's 44 Magnum. A large frame. Well, I guess this is kind of a big frame too. L frame versus a N frame. And I don't have a K frame. That'll be like a Model 19, or I think, I think Model 15 is a 38 Special. Um, and one of the things I love about this, um, especially if you can get it with a partial underlug, or like even a shorter barrel, this only weighs 45 ounces. Whereas like a Ruger, you're looking in a similar configuration. You're looking at more weight, and I can just hold this thing one-handed. I can. When I first got it, my hand shook quite a bit. Um, now it's just like, I don't know, I guess I've got, <laughs> my muscles would be a little sore after shooting and I guess I just got stronger after taking it to the range and I can shoot the, I can shoot 44 Magnum rounds, no problem, one handed in double action mode, I mean, I guess everyone has their own tolerance for recoil and, um, I mean, I, I think I got a good bit of it. I mean, I had practiced doing double taps with it with 180 grain rounds, so much fun. Unfortunately, I didn't get to try the 240 grain. I'm sure that would have been even more blast. And what I'm honestly going to miss most about this, beyond the aesthetics, would be people just <laughs> people aren't used to seeing stuff like this. Every time I went to the range, someone next to me go, "Dude, what are you shooting? The blast!" Because the blast is enormous. Despite having a six-inch barrel, it's an enormous blast. Um, they're loud. I don't really notice. I, I double up on hearing protection, but I remember having a young female shooter next to me with a 22 rifle there with her boyfriend. She would refuse to shoot uh, whenever I was shooting the gun because the blast was so intense. She did not like the muzzle, uh, muzzle blast. Her boyfriend loved the gun, and I let him shoot a couple rounds with it and wanted to keep a brass casing. That was cute. <laughs> I only have brass casings now. I don't have any live ammo left or... I'd show it. I wouldn't put it in a gun, obviously. But uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, even the range, the range master, you know, it was like, yeah, man, can I put a couple rounds through that? I mean, I, you know, I'm all about sharing the fun. This is a, this is to me, this is a toy. I know it's a dangerous weapon, but I, I didn't keep this thing loaded for home protection or anything like that. Once I got my automatic subcompact, I just stored that with the magazine in it, rotated out the mags and all that good stuff, and. This is just, it's a little heavy, it's a little sluggish. If I, if I really wanted to, I could, I could definitely conceal this under a jacket or something. But um, it's so heavy, it just, when you go to draw, it slows you down. Whereas I can just whip this thing out, whip that thing out of the waistband. But I was surprisingly able to draw this pretty fast from the waistband. But um, I didn't have a holster or anything. Never accessorized it or anything other than the, the grip. I was looking at spring kits and all that stuff to lighten the trigger, but the trigger is great. The single action was, I didn't like shooting in single action when I got it because it was so, this is my first pistol, my first revolver, and just a little bit of pressure and just goes off. It's got to be around like three pounds or something because I've shot plenty of guns with five pound triggers and it's incredibly light, um, just a little jarring. I, I don't have need, any need for single action. If I was going to shoot some stuff at 100 yards, but... I've heard of people that can, plenty of guys that can hit at 100 yards in double action mode. And quite frankly, I like guns that are hard to shoot. That's why I, I love Keltex. <laughs> I guess that sounds kind of weird. Keltex are hard to shoot. 
This thing has a nice set of sights on it, but the, that's a heavy trigger. I'm not that bad with it. I never got good with it. You know, look at the sights on this thing. This uh, doesn't have that little orange insert that you see a lot of Smith & Wessons with. This is uh, serrated. I'm going to miss those sights, but like, I, I missed that firing pin there. Uh, that's got to go. Um, I like I like that, the look of the barrel. I don't like the full under. I like that partial under lug. I don't like the, the K-frames with no lug. I just, I guess it's not too bad once I do some work to it. I don't do my own gunsmithing, but, you know, accessorizing, all that stuff. I was originally going to replace this with a Model 19. Then I saw the mountain gun at the gun store for 600 And I'm like, I got to have that. And, you know, I'm going to miss it. I mean, as soon as I'm done shooting this film, I'm going to ship it out. So if this seems a little long, that's why I'm... You know, let the sell buyer know that, hey, you want to sell this back to me after I get my bachelor's in a few years? I will I'll pay you more than what you paid me. Uh, that's, I mean, I paid way too much for this guy. I paid well over 600 But then if he wants like 550 or something, I sold her for 475 If he wants 554 I mean, I'll, I'll pay him. I'm sure he's probably going to end up doing work in it because this is, this is getting close to the tune-up. There's some end shake, a little too much wiggle. Um, timing's probably at next thing to go is probably going to be timing but you know I, I put that in my ad I'll let everyone know this is what's wrong with it here's all the rust and now I'm an honest seller I bought this off a gun and pawn shop and they didn't tell me they didn't show me the rust and all that shit the bore is great I mean great target pistol I mean great fucking gun I'm I'm going to miss this I don't care about the rust and all that shit I mean it's just a great gun and like I said I can hold it one handed if I got a little bit stronger does shake sometimes, but you know you lock, lock the arms. I don't do that shit. Stroke the trigger. I hate, I hate, I hate these grooves. I never line up on my finger. There we go. Stroke the trigger. I'm watching through the camera, so yeah. Gonna miss that trigger. I had this gun. It's a little bit of grit there. Just double check. See if it's unloaded. I don't even own ammo for this, so if this gun came with bullet, it's free ammo from the range. I just, it's just, I don't know. Like that, a lot of people say they don't make Smith and Wesson's quality controls. Control has gone way downhill. They don't make them like they used to, but at the same time, I mean, easier to replace parts. I guess they call them. This was wasn't a safe queen, but I treated this very well. So I mean. I really hope the buyer enjoys it, and if he ever wants to sell it back to me, I mean, he'll he'll make some money off it. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll cut this short. Alright. So, thanks for watching my film. I just... I'm gonna miss this thing. So, uh, <laughs> time to get to the post office, or uh, UPS store. Thanks for watching.